What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So we are waiting on some parts for the LS. Um, so the LS swap is on hold right now until the parts come in. So I figured we will make a will it run video. And this is actually gonna start a little bit of a series. Um, so I want to kind of start a will it run Wednesday. Uh, and I can't promise there'll be one every Wednesday, but uh, I wanna start to do some videos like this of just getting some old machines uh, kind of up and running. We've done some in the past on some classic Hondas uh, and there'll be plenty more of those uh, coming because I have, I don't know, probably seven or eight uh, random motorcycles of different sizes all from the 70s uh, that don't currently run. So we're gonna pull them into the shop, put them up on the lift and see what we can do uh, to get them fired up. Uh, this is gonna be the first candidate. So this is a 1971 as best I can tell, uh, Yamaha JT1. It's just a little 60cc um, kind of off-road little dirt bike and unfortunately this one is completely seized uh, so first order of business is going to see if we can even get this motor uh, turning over um, and if not then this is going to be a very short episode so to give you a little bit more details on the bike at least as much as I know about it it is a two-stroke uh, this little tank here is for the two-stroke oil. This is one of those systems that's designed for you to just put straight gas in the gas tank, two-stroke oil in here, and then it has a, um, a system that actually kind of automatically feeds oil. It's supposed to be a little bit more efficient uh, than running straight two-stroke oil. I have no idea if that system even works or not. I literally just bought this thing super cheap off of Facebook Marketplace uh, as a package deal with another mini bike that we'll be doing a Will It Run video on soon. And um, the condition of all of this stuff is kind of unknown. So for this video, it's gonna be trying to get the motor freed up, check and see if we have spark, kind of go through those um, kind of initial steps to see if we can get the bike running on just straight uh, two-stroke gas. And then if that works, then we'll figure out what we want to do with a plan uh, for the bike overall. If we want to do a restoration, a modification, just get it running and blast around the yard. Uh, that's kind of to be determined. But the uh, name of the game now is going to see if we can get this cylinder freed up. So the only thing I've done to this bike is I put it up on the lift. I did pull the chain off because the motor is locked up. That rear wheel doesn't spin at all. So just to make it easier for me to move around the shop, I pulled the chain off. And then I pulled the spark plug out and sprayed a bunch of uh, kind of a mixture of PB blaster and uh, Marvel mystery oil down there uh, just yesterday. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's done anything at all uh, to free it up. What do you say we pull the top of this head off? It looks like it's just four 10 millimeter bolts. And we can at least see what the piston looks like in there, make sure it's not just you know, broken and wedged in there that hopefully it's just, uh, you know, seized with a little bit of rust. So the problem with a lot of these little mini bikes is they are ridden by little kids, very rough, and then just kind of left outside. They're, you know, pretty, pretty badly neglected, which is kind of the case with any vehicle that, uh, you know, somebody's not using the commute to work. You know, people very rarely like change the oil in their lawnmower or you know, pressure washers and that kind of stuff. So mini bikes kind of tend to fall into that same category where people just ride the crap out of them and then, you know, knock them over, leave them on the side of the house and winter comes and they don't ride it for a couple months. And, you know, so they're pretty typical to be uh, in rough shape. And this one is no exception to that. These bolts all seem to be coming out pretty easy though. I did go ahead and hit these with some PB Blaster while I was uh, spraying it down the cylinder, so that may have helped. Hopefully we'll be able to clear the frame. Yeah, there's all that Marvel mystery oil. Okay, sweet. Definitely some rust on there. Let's uh, grab a rag. Clean off the oil. See how she looks. Yep, 
Yeah, a decent amount of rust around the edge there. Let me pull you in close. So you can see we definitely have a good amount of rust kind of formed around the outside. Good news is that piston's not like broken or anything. So I'm wondering, I think this part of the cylinder should come off as well. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any additional bolts or anything. So I might try and just get a little pry bar and see if we can't try and just kind of work this up. Uh, I may also be able to get like a piece of wood or I don't really want to hit it with anything stronger than that. Uh, just to try and kind of break that loose a little bit. So I'm hoping I can get a pry bar in here. I don't want to break any of these fins or anything. Okay. Actually looks like it's already a little bit loose, at least on the bottom. I'm gonna need to pull that exhaust off too, I can imagine. Okay. Kind of working it around, and you know, I don't want to break anything. Oh yeah, she's sliding. Um, let me figure out how to pull this exhaust off. Got the exhaust off. I'm gonna try and continue to work this head off of here. Looks like we may need to remove the studs themselves. I'm going to uh, get some little bolts so we can just unscrew these studs out of here. It might be, this might end up being a, a very quick video of me uh, going straight to pulling this engine. Um, Cause I think the transmission might actually be stuck as well. So I can't tell cause this, you know, the piston is pretty much free in that cylinder now but the motor's still not turning over. So I'm trying to figure out if that's because it's stuck in gear. This gear shifter doesn't seem to be doing much. I'm kind of rotating the sprocket over here as much as I can. But. Yeah, let's go ahead and pull these studs out and we can at least get that off. So to pull these studs out, I'm using uh, what I'm going to call the two nut method. It's basically you run a nut, you run a second nut behind it, tighten them together, and then you can put a wrench on the bottom one and use that to twist to get the stud off. Go ahead and separate them before I get it all the way out. Should be able to continue to spin it by hand here. So we'll clean all these up on the wire wheel and everything before they go back in. But I'll show you again on this one. We're just gonna run a nut. You know, leave about a quarter inch or so. Throw another nut. I'm just using the one that came on it. Tighten them together. And then we should be able to just work it out. Just like that. Not too bad at all. So I'm gonna keep doing this and then we'll see if we can't pull this cylinder off. Got our four exhaust studs out. Cylinder is out. 
We'll clean this up in the parts washer really good, but as far as I can tell, I don't really see any bad scoring or anything. I'll end up pulling the piston off too and just cleaning that. She's a little, a little crunchy. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get any movement with the Kickstarter. No, nothing. Yeah, she's still locked solid, so. It's either something in our transmission, it could be main bearing down there, hard to say. Yeah, we're getting nothing. So I need to mess with this side um, over here a little bit. I'm pretty sure this is the clutch rod here. I'm not really getting any movement out of that because I'm thinking maybe I can just activate the clutch. Maybe the clutch is stuck. You know, say, so, okay, so maybe it's in gear and the clutch is frozen and that's what's keeping everything locked up. So I say we go over to the right side of the bike, see if we can pull that cover off and at least gain access to the clutch. And we'll go from there. So we're gonna pull the side cover off. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling off some of this other stuff. Get the seat out of the way. Get the tank out of the way. good kind of idea of what we're going to be working with on the, if the internals of this thing are just complete junk. Now I'm just going to start undoing all these case covers around this side. I want to see if this thing's going to come apart. I'm obviously operating with no manual whatsoever and also no prior experience with this bike so I'm sure some of you Yamaha fans that uh, know these bikes in and out are probably yelling at me because I'm probably forgetting something or doing something backwards, but hey, that's part of the fun. It's we're just figuring out what works and what doesn't. Impact driver, invaluable tool for taking apart classic motorcycles. Pull the dipstick out. Dry as a bone as I expected. Let's see. He rusty. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Put this aside for now. Yeah, she is probably been underwater at some point by the looks of it. So because of how rusted our clutch is, I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can't pull it apart. Just check everything out, see if we can't loosen it up. You know, if I was gonna restore this bike, all of this would be, you know, it would have to come apart for sure and get either vapor blasted, replaced, I'm really curious of what this is going to look like when we get it all apart. 
I was able to find a manual for this bike online. So we can see if it has like specifications for a lot of this stuff, you know, tightening torques and stuff like that when we go to put it all back together. It's got a lot of crustiness on it. <laughs> wow. That is not what you want to see in a clutch. Yeah, steel's just rusted and stuck to friction material. Oof. Yeah. She's rough. I'm curious if at one point I'll be able to find out what's really holding this thing back. I'm gonna keep going deeper on this thing and go ahead and pull off this last piece of the clutch. So this seems to be the gear selector up here. This is the kickstarter, so that's like that. That turns the motor over. And here he returns. like a little spring and there's this little guy and this actually seems like what shifts gears Hmm. That still seems very locked up. Hmm. Kind of mess with all these shafts. See, the crank is still not spinning freely. Let me do some exploring and I'll bring you guys back. So I was able to throw a uh, socket right here on the crankshaft bolt and actually work it back and forth and we actually have movement now. It's a little crunchy if I'm honest, but it at least moves. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. That's obviously progress. Uh, I still can't get it to shift at all. So the transmission is definitely still kind of gummed up or rusted on the inside. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to access it. I'm thinking we may just go ahead and pull the whole motor out of the frame and put it on the bench. It's probably going to be the easiest thing to do. 
four bolts and one wire. <laughs> uh, working on tiny bikes is fun. Alrighty, so we got that moving around. I don't think it makes sense to continue to come in from this direction. So I'm going to start to take it apart from this direction. Uh, let me throw this on like a block of wood or something. Just kind of level it out a little bit. Okay, so we got a bunch of Phillips. I think I'm gonna need to pull the flywheel off. Probably gonna need to pull the sprocket off too. All right, let's just start tearing it apart. All right, got my new fancy flywheel puller set. I'll throw a link to this. I actually have never used it, uh, but it was relatively cheap. What size is this? Um, it's like roughly 27 millimeters. Two adjustables. Did we get it. That's it. Come on. It's great having the right tool for the job. And there's just a little key. And we put it back in there to make sure we get that proper. See any other bolts? I wonder if we need to pull this magneto off. Let's just. It doesn't fit in here. Man, this is just like full of crap. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm gonna turn it back now. Battery died, but luckily we didn't get very far. All I did was uh, pull off this crankshaft gear, I'm gonna call it. Crusty. Look at that. So this is um, this is pretty interesting. So this is what's called a rotary valve engine. Um, so you can see as the piston goes up and down, the crank turns. This like half moon shape kind of opens up, and that is actually what acts as a camshaft, um, which is pretty cool. I've never uh, never worked on an engine like this before, but I guess it's pretty common in these older, you know, mini bikes and stuff. I think the Kawasaki um, I have, it's a 90, is also a, a rotary valve. So they uh, have all kinds of specifications that you can modify these and like trim them at certain angles and stuff. But obviously, we're not worried about that. We're just worried about trying to get this thing up and running. And I'd be lying to you if. Uh, if my confidence was growing as the deeper we go. Uh, one, just because of my lack of knowledge on this particular engine. 
uh, and two, just because of how much just caked on rust and dirt and stuff is inside of this. You know, typically the inside of a motor should be, you know, lab room, or operating room clean. <laughs> and this is uh, far from that. So let's see if I'm not mistaken, the cases should be ready to separate. Bring you guys in about as close as I can here. So this is the shift mechanism here. This part kind of slides, moves the little shift forks. And this is all just, oh man, it's all just rusted. Rusted shut. And that's why this mechanism won't even move at all. <laughs> you know, there's no there's nothing left on it and it still won't, won't move like it's supposed to. Sad day. So I just spent uh, probably an hour off camera just kinda pulling apart this whole shift mechanism and everything um, and kind of taking the case apart, cleaning it, putting it back together, just kind of messing around. Um, and I think I got it working. So this is where the sprocket goes. So you can see right now it's in neutral, somewhat concerning noise, but it's in neutral. Then we go, the way this transmission is neutral at the bottom and then four speeds up. So neutral and then that should be first. Second, third, and fourth. And it's locked out. So down shift to third, second, first, and then neutral again. So that seems to be shifting and everything like it's supposed to. Um, it's still very concerning the amount of dirty, rusty kind of grossness. Um, I mean, who are we kidding? This engine needs to be fully torn apart, rebuilt, the you know bearings and everything need to be replaced. Um, I'm not interested in going that far with this project. I mean, I paid, I think I paid $50 for this whole bike and again, in that package deal. And the idea here is we might just see if we can get it running. It may run for 30 seconds and then explode, <laughs> but I'm just still curious if we can even get it to uh, to the point of getting running. So I'm going to uh, try to carefully go back and view this video and see if I can get everything put back uh, exactly how it came apart. So since this is the first one in this series, I want you guys to leave a comment. Would you rather me just leave the camera running the whole time and, you know, we end up with like a... 45 minute hour long video of me just kind of working through stuff um, or do you want me to kind of cut it up a little bit or take out some of the monotonous parts uh, you let me know I'm kind of completely um, on board with whatever direction we want to go Got the flywheel and everything back on. I'm gonna go ahead and throw back on these cylinder head studs. 
unfortunately we did have an incident off camera and the bottom of our piston chipped a little bit just because it's so brittle uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and send it still but uh, th that may come back to bite us only time will tell just gonna run these in they don't have to be super tight once these are in, we will throw our cylinder back on, and then I'll probably hook up a drill to the crank and just spin this thing up and see how she's doing. Yeah. Cool. to move pretty well. I'm just gonna turn it over with the drill a little bit. I have to hold this down. I can hear I can hear it sparking. That's a good sign. Oh shit. Check if we have spark. <laughs> How about that? I guess our magneto is working. Sweet. This seems to be turning over nicely now. I think we got really lucky that uh, when it was seized, it was literally at, at almost complete top dead center. I mean, so far up, which means the little rust ring was at the very top and was, we were able to just kind of knock it off without any issues, so. Sweet, that is awesome. I didn't expect to have spark all of a sudden. It was sparking from over here. It looks like our wire has a little break in it. So before I put this back on, I will, uh, heat shrink it. It looks like the wire is actually still all intact. So I'll probably just slide a piece of heat shrink and, you know, cover that up so we're not losing spark right there uh, when we go to actually fire this thing up, which now I'm actually gaining a lot more confidence that we're going to be able to do that. So I went ahead and hit all these clutch parts on the wire wheel. I think they should be clean enough for what we're doing here. Um, Let's make sure it's engaged in all those teeth properly. So I decided since this is a wet clutch bike, I was gonna pull these back off and just coat everything in oil before we put it back together, just cause it is all very dry in here. I've been, as I've been reassembling, I've been taking my little oil squirter and just kind of coating stuff down and, you know, so we're not spinning this thing over completely dry. Obviously, I am going to put actual oil in it once we get to that point, but just while we're kind of assembling everything, we keep everything nice and lubricated. I'm going to go ahead and bolt the top of our head on. Do have the gasket in place. Obviously, if this was a full actual rebuild, I'd be replacing all these gaskets. And we may do that. You know, depending on how this turns out, we can decide as a group what we want to do with this bike. If we want to do a full teardown proper rebuild on this motor or you know we'll just trying to determine the overall condition before we get to that point all right i think we're ready for this side cover this gasket actually looks like it survived hopefully enough to seal oil in here
Got the engine back in. I wish I had this side cover because I actually won't be able to test out the clutch because I'm missing kind of half of the mechanism, but we can still kind of keep going. This wiring is pretty shot up here. Um, it had like a little yeah, wire nut on it. So we'll, uh, we'll fix that when the time comes, but. I did just put some oil in it so that I wouldn't forget. Uh, let's go ahead and put the exhaust back on. You definitely don't want to run two strokes without their exhaust. All right, we just sprayed the two cycle oil down the chamber. We put the plug back in. Let's see what happens. Test the spark again. fix this wire up here and just start to kind of remove any of the variables. So I'm still getting very intermittent sparks. So I'm going to pull this flywheel back off. Um, and th there was some rust on the inside. Maybe I just didn't do a good enough job cleaning it off. Um, so it's just kind of not quite generating a consistent enough amount of electricity to have a consistent spark. That's uh, my current theory. So we're gonna pull that back off and see what it looks like. So you can see there's a little bit of rust kind of on these little pads here. So I'm gonna take some like thousand grit sandpaper or something like that, rub it in here. I'm also going to pull off the actual magneto um, again and probably scotch bright the little pads uh, and then for a good measure, kind of refile the points a little bit too, just kind of try and freshen it all up. All right, Magneto's cleaned up and back together. I'm also gonna try a different plug. I don't have the exact same plug, um, but this one looks to be similar. Let's, let's try it this way first. A lot more consistent spark with this. So let's put this in here. Um, I'm gonna put it in here real quick and turn the motor over by hand just to make sure we don't run into any interference issues or anything. It looks like this plug goes into the cylinder uh, the same amount, but just to, okay, we're good. Uh, what do you say we put a little bit more fuel down there Try again. So 
word of gas like that. All right, let's give it a shot. No luck. All right, so I decided to put the carburetor on and actually put some fuel in here. Because um, I really just think it's a fuel delivery thing of why we're not getting any pops and bangs. Um, because we have what seems to be good compression. We have good spark. Uh, I don't know, let's see. Holy crap. We have smoke. Oh. We have smoke, people. gone through the carb yet. Let's try the old spray a little fuel straight down the carb throat. This is going to be sketchy. One hand over here. It actually popped and banged. Okay. Um, let's pull this carburetor completely apart and clean it and go from there. I'm going to rig up a way to get the camera kind of directly above so you guys can see what I'm doing. But we're just going to start pulling stuff apart. That's the choke. Pull this bowl off. Hopefully we can keep this gasket somewhat intact because I do not have a replacement. Not too bad. Nice. Alright, let's pull off this guy. Interesting. So that's like a built-in needle and seat into that fuel. Uh. Ooh, that's crusty. Definitely gonna need to clean that out nicely. I think that is it. That just holds the carb on. 
All right, this isn't dirty enough for me to really justify uh, hitting the ultrasonic cleaner uh, on it, just because it's really not that bad. So I can tell that this bike definitely hasn't run in, I would guess, 15 years. Um, and of course, that's a complete guess, but just judging by the fact that there isn't a ton of that like uh, residue that um, ethanol leaves in here. Okay, slide this thing back in place. See if we can fill off that bowl. Okay. I think the bowl is full now. Our fuel line has about half. Maybe say we give this thing a shot. That noise is my drill making, not the engine making that noise. switch to a different drill. I can't hear if the engine's doing anything. I'm seeing a little bit of smoke. Let's try it again. Now what do we do? Seemed like it drank all the fuel out of the fuel line. We'll fill that up. Um, really need to continue to mess with this choke situation. Yeah, I definitely can't tell if the choke is on or I'd like it to just be off. And we can just modulate it with our hand. Huh. Let's keep, let's keep turning it over and see if we can't get it to, uh, to keep going. The nut came loose. So the flywheel nut came loose and I was in here trying to figure out what was going on and we sheared our key in half. So that's why. So this was just able to free spin on the crank. So I need to measure this and figure out, I don't know that I have any extra keys around. So we'll have to see what we can figure out to, uh, to fix that. Man, just as we were getting getting going but uh, we'll get it straightened out. So I picked up one of these little Woodruff key assortments and best I can tell from the broken one this is like 3 by 5 by 12 Woodruff key. Um, let's see how she fits in there. Nice. All right, we will tighten this back up and hopefully be back to getting this thing to start and run on its own fuel. Let's put a little more carb cleaner to help us along. Try from this side so I can 
modulate the throttle. Pops and bangs. I think we drank a lot of our fuel down. There we go. Alright, let's try. to run away so badly. Um, so just the amount of fuel in here. Let's, uh, let's turn the choke off. I wonder if it's this throttle adjustment. Um, let's see if we can turn this and because who knows how far off these uh, settings were, you know. Pull the choke again. Make sure we got fuel. made any difference. I have to run this thing backwards. It keeps pulling all this out.
just getting way too much air in this setup. So that's why I'm kind of modulating it with my thumb a little bit. That's pretty darn good. We definitely got a lot of shit all over our exhaust. Uh, let's do it again. I'm just going to keep modulating it with my thumb. shop air out a little bit. Alright, you're gonna have to excuse the fan noise. I'm gonna try and fire it up one more time before we call it.
in the car. Well, that's where I'm going to call it on episode one of Will It Run Wednesdays. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> me kind of tinkering around with this little Yamaha JT1. Um, the thing was a, a pretty big hunk of junk when we started, and now it's just slightly less of a, a piece of junk. Um, I wish we had more parts because I would be able to test out the transmission we took apart, make sure the clutch is operating, uh, actually get the bike to kind of idle and run right, but without that, you know, most of the intake system, uh, there's just no way for me to get the tuning right um, with these jets. So we're kind of, you know, stuck with what we got, but considering I was able to get it to idle and rev and everything, uh, I'm going to consider that a success. So some of these Will It Run videos, we will go further than this. You know, we'll go through testing and making sure the trans works, maybe all the way up to uh, a test ride. You know, we'll kind of have to go through the brakes and everything else. But the, the core of these videos is going to be, can we get the engine to run uh, with the parts we have or very minimal parts? Then we can decide which direction we want to go with the project. So we can go as far as do we want to restore this bike? Um, you know, I think personally, I think this bike would cost too much uh, to restore. It's going to just kind of quickly you know, surpass what it's going to be worth. Um, you know, it's a little 60cc that most adults, if they want one of these, it's because they have one as a kid, which means they probably want a really good condition one. And then if you're just a, you know, young kid or wanting to buy a bike for your kid, most likely you're going to buy just a newer, less expensive bike for them to learn on. Um, so the, the resale opportunity here isn't, um, you know, isn't huge. So let me know what you guys think. Do we want to go and kind of piece this thing together at least enough to ride it um, or is this good enough you know just let me know in the comments what you think uh, i hope you guys enjoyed it subscribe if this is your first video on the channel we got a ton more content like this middle of the ls swap on my camaro we got uh, full builds coming soon more honda builds some other stuff that uh, we'll kind of clue you guys in on shortly but i appreciate you guys watching i'll see you on the next one